Now this is a field area that we might add a food plot to this year. And you can see it looks like a mess. Uh, we have cherry trees in here. We have gray dogwood clumps over here. And then we have sumac back there. We have some birch, some oak. And to a lot of people, they look at this and think, you know, how am I gonna get a food plot in this location with no major equipment and not even a mower? And so this is a very easy example of how I've been planting food plots for many years, just with an ATV, an ATV sprayer and a handheld spreader. And you can do that this year. We're on March 23rd right now and we have so much time. Even if we started this a month from now, it'd be great. And the reason you wanna start early is because you're eliminating future weed debris. Your most important spraying is always in the spring. And then you have follow-up sprayings to make sure that it gets down to soil. But I wanna show you something right here. This area right here with the trees that are here, you can say that this hasn't been planted for at least 12 to 15 years. And so lots of sod, lots of grass and matted grass that's been on this field for many years. But when you take your foot in a lot of locations like this, unless it's tundra and swamp, you kick one time and the soil's right there. Click right here, the soil's right here. So really, you're talking about that much thatch. What happens with this is you're gonna be spraying any thing that approaches in this field. But we'll talk about that in a second. But this right here will disintegrate, die, dry out, and blow off the field. It'll turn into nothing. There's really not much there. And you think about it, even for 15 years, this grass has been allowed to lay there and grow and uh, fall back over. And this is all that we're left with. So you can imagine, you know, where did all that other stuff go? Well, it dries out, dies, becomes part of the earth. The reason this is so important for that first spring is you don't want to try to get seed through this or seed through weeds that would grow. I'm sure the weeds in here are about this tall. So if you allow them to get this tall, now you have all that future green weed debris that is really hard to seed through later. So we're trying to avoid that. As soon as the, we the weeds out here are less than 12 to 15 inches tall and growing aggressively, we're looking for warm weather. Um, and I would say this uh, spring green up is gonna be early um, April this year. It's going to be kind of early. We've had early spring. We didn't have a lot of snow to melt and it melted fast. So I'm just spraying glyphosate. I'm not worrying about 2,4-D or any other chemical. And uh, I've sprayed a lot of glyphosate. So I'm looking at 25 gallon sprayer on an ATV, which is really nice. It's a good size because then I spray two acres with that. I'm looking at just a couple nozzles in the back. Maybe it might be a 10 foot, 12 foot coverage rate with something like that. I'm traveling seven to eight miles an hour and I'm killing two acres. That's my coverage rate. I know that I can cover two acres with 25 gallons at seven to eight miles an hour with the type of sprayer I have. So knowing that it's pretty easy. You figure out your coverage rate, and then you're adding two quarts per acre of glyphosate. So in that 25 gallons, I'm filling that up and then I'm going to add four quarts into that 25 gallon jug and that's gonna be enough for me to kill two acres. That's my coverage rate. And I'm spraying those weeds when they're growing aggressively and it's warm and I'm not waiting till they're two feet tall and three feet tall and four feet tall because I, again, I'm eliminating future weed debris. I'm going to be spraying that roughly I would say mid-April to end of April, right around in that time frame. And then I'm waiting five weeks, four weeks, six weeks, right around there. You want some more appreciable weed growth because you can't kill those weeds unless they're showing. So I'm waiting for another batch of weeds to come in. And what you'll find is after that sp first spraying, you're probably going to be left with some broad leaves, maybe some stubborn grasses, but you're not going to be left with much to spray. Let's say you kill 80% of the weeds that first time, that second time, you're killing 15% and that third time you're gonna kill 5%. Uh, percent. And so I'm timing that out so that when I end with that third spraying, it's actually the ground will be open enough to where you can apply, you can actually broadcast, we'll broadcast a brassica blend on one half. And even if we wanted to, what we did by the house last year, we could kill this, kill it two or three times, and then we could bring in, if we had the heavy equipment and put uh, corn in here, and we drill that in. But just for an easy plot, we're looking at spraying 
five to six weeks apart three times. That last spraying is going to be around August 1st. And what we're going to do then is we're going to broadcast our brassica blend right on the ground. And that's going to be on half of this field up here. And at the same time, I'm going to spray glyphosate. The glyphosate will not kill the seeds because they haven't emerged yet. I get questions on that all the time. I know a lot of you have heard that, but it's a repeated question. So by that time, the seed will get right on the soil and there's going to be no weed competition after it. And then I'll spray that third time at that same time. And, uh, and we'll have a complete kill out here. Now you notice some of the areas, even if we go back here to this gray dogwood, is we'll go into an area like that or the sumac that's over there. And again, without a mower, without uh, heavy equipment, I'm just gonna drive the ATV right through that stuff and spray at the same time. Once that's leafed out and greened up, then pretty easy to kill. Just drive over it, spray it at the same time. And you think, boy, I wanna get in here and mow it. You don't have to that's gonna turn into a bunch of dead twigs and sticks that are half dried and rotted that'll fall down with the first wind and snow and heavy rain in October, November. They're gonna stick up. You'll be surprised at how little, there's not gonna provide any shade, but there's hardly going to, going to be any coverage from all these sticks and debris. Now, some of these larger trees in here, like the cherry, the oak that's right over here, the birch that's in the background, maybe a honeysuckle bush or autumn olive, I might chainsaw those down and just get it down and move them off. But really for a lot of this growth out here, it's going to be dead twigs and sticks and debris. And that dead stuff as of right now won't be a concern for you around August 1st. I've started many food plots like this, very successful. Once I put the brass on early August, then I'm going into the other half of the plot and that's a perfect time to add rye, wheat, oats, seeds that you can throw on the soil. You'll get another month. It'll be Labor Day weekend right around there. Um, is a great time to apply those greens and those cereal grains. And then you can follow up around October 1st if you want to thicken that up again. I would start with 200 pounds of cereal grain per acre. We typically go with straight rye. You could add wheat. I like the rye and wheat because it stays green all the way through the following spring so the deer have something to eat in the spring. That's one of the most missed times in the food plot woods. And then I could add, if I want it to thicken up, I could add another 200 pounds of winter rye uh, towards the end of September, about four weeks after that, that, uh, that seeding. As far as soil test, get a soil test, put on the recommended amount of fertilizer and lime if you can. We're using plot start, and that's a great alternative in an area like this. I've put out 65 tons of bagged lime, 50 pounds at a time and put those into my truck, take them to the land, put those out sometimes by hand. And it's not a fun process. So when I can come up here and just place sp spray plot start on it, get that into the soil, just correct the soil for a few weeks of growing. It's not a long-term solution, but when we have a remote location like this, it's hard to get to and we're using small equipment. It, to me, it's really ideal for avoiding the mess of lime. We can't get that up here with a lime spreader or anything. So pretty easy to amend the soil to get rid of weeds and to have a great crop growing up here with a lot of green for this hunting season. It doesn't take a lot of work. You're more drive time and spraying and then seeding with an earthway spreader is really easy. This area up here, we're looking at, it's a pretty big shelf up here up to the power line. We're gonna have switchgrass along that power line potentially. But in this area right here, we're looking at at least a three acre food plot. It'll be very substantial. And it's not gonna take much time. I know by experience spraying those three acres, we have to go get water somewhere and go back and get it, bring it up here. But other than the drive to go get water, just the spraying time up here will be less than an hour for three acres, 45 minutes, and it'll be done. And uh, we'll do that three times, not a lot of work. It's just spread out. You have to time it right. You can't allow, if you don't spray that second time, you come back here three months later, you're gonna be really disappointed because those weeds are gonna be three, four feet high. Learn from my mistakes, don't do that. So we really have to be diligent. Just like the switchgrass, you have to be diligent with the chemical application, get rid, getting rid of weeds. And if you're not gonna get rid of weeds up here, some people say, oh, a weedy plot's a good thing. Well, it is during the summertime. Deer like diversity and they like the young growth from those weeds, but guess what? All those weeds die going into the hunting season. And we want this actually to be a hunting season draw and we wanna get the most out of our work. So I want three acres of food plot growing, not a quarter acre or a half acre because it's overtaken by weeds that are gone during the hunting season, leaving us with no attraction and a waste of all our time and energy. This food plot will be easy to put in. I can't wait to bring it to you this year and show you how it relates to the rest of the land. This will be a great food plot for this season. It's not gonna take a lot of work and you can do it 
hey, if you had to, you could do this with a backpack sprayer. I don't encourage it. Take a long, lot longer. You have to spray twice as much chemical at the same time to get that coverage rate. It's hard with a four gallon backpack sprayer. I've done that too. So with an ATV, an ATV sprayer, we enjoy using the Packer Max to get that seed soil good contact when we do plant and easy seeds that'll grow on open bare soil and we'll get it done this season and bring it to you. And I can't wait because this is a really cool spot with some mega bucks in the area. And uh, we hope to bring you not only the food plot, but the fruits of our labor and success this fall. Hey guys, I really appreciate you watching today's video. We're out here having some fun today. We're planting some switchgrass, cutting some timber, making some bedding areas, but most importantly, we're putting it all together and that's critical. Any habitat improvements that you're making, you can't just make improvements because it's a good spot. You have to link those together so that it helps your hunt this fall. Really, I encourage you to check out my web classes. The link is in the description. It's helped a lot of folks design their properties and do what we're out here having fun doing right now.